My name is Senka Caro from LightNet, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most tenacious, powerful, and intelligent women in the disclosure movement, and that would be none other than Linda Moulton Howe. Her investigative reporting has caused quite a few feathers to be ruffled over the years, both in the government and society at large. She never refuses to back down and she has more energy than a teenage girl to this day. She is talking in this interview that we're gonna be releasing on November 2nd at 6.30 at night about some incredible things, about the grays, about the tall whites, about 9-11, about the genetic makeup of humans. And I want to share a clip with you right now about some of these topics, just to give you an idea of what she's going to be talking about. And in this first clip, she talks about meeting a man in 1999. He was a DIA defense intelligent official that was retiring and he agreed to meet with her on a park bench with a white noise maker. And he said, yeah, um, even the satellites can't hear us now. And he disclosed to her over the course of seven hours. You know, Linda talks about the interview having to end at seven hours because their bladders couldn't even take it. But he revealed to her that over the last 270 million years, ETs have been interacting with humanity. And this is something that deeply bothers Linda, knowing that if the US government does have this information, how is it that we are as children of ETs and her understanding of what he was saying to her, don't even know their parents, right? And she also talks about how he told her about 9-11 in November 1999. Now, this is before it happened by several months. And he said, look, um, something is going to change the world forever. And he alluded that it had to do with an ET war. Now, this is incredible. So check out the clip. I also invite you to like and subscribe because we're going to be leading up to this interview with four different clips. And here's the first one. And in 1999, uh, in late November, he called me and said, a colleague of mine is retiring from the, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and he would very much like to talk with you would you be willing to travel? And the three of us, World Bank, DIA retiree, and me, we met at a agreed upon location. It started in midday and it had a lot of boats that had a lot of white noise. And as we sat down at the place where this man had control of it, wherever we were to talk, it was, totally up to him. And he had chosen a place where there was a bench and there were these huge boats and yachts and it was on a Sunday and there was this churning constant and as we sat down, he looked up, there's only three of us, World Bank, me, DIA. He looked up at the sky and he said quite seriously, I do not think that our satellites can penetrate this white noise. And I remember sitting down with the idea, my God, they're listening everywhere. We were there for seven hours. Our bladders are what stopped the meeting. And the first thing that he said to me, honest to God, our government has proof the three competing extraterrestrial civilizations have been fighting over this planet for 270 million years. I said, what proof? He said, no, I can't tell you that. They will not allow that out. But just take my word, 270 million. And we started into a dialogue that dealt with the kind of planet, the kind of sun, the types of ETs, the irony that the Christian Bible 
begins with the Garden of Eden, where <clears throat> what is teaching the first man and woman, Adam and Eve? Vipers, reptiles, snakes. The conversation in those seven hours went through what the government of the United States had been learning about these conflicts between a reptilian civilization, a blonde, blue-eyed Nordic civilization, gray civilization, and I am sitting there realizing that what I am now being put into is a discussion on facts so far removed from anything any of us are taught, allowed to even know, let alone allowed to question that I am now in a discussion with a man who for 23 years announces in this meeting, Linda, my job for 23 years has been to monitor, study, and analyze the conflict of three competing extraterrestrial civilizations on this planet in the past and now. There's no possibility that he was lying to me. This was a truth conversation for seven hours. And when it was over and we were all leaving, he looked at me and he said, this was 1999, December. He said, something is going to happen in the next two to three years that will change the earth forever. Go to September 11th, 2001. I have a meeting that I'm to go to in downtown Philly and I'm dressing and I have CNN on. And it came in breaking news, breaking news. A plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center in New York City. And I stopped and I looked at the screen and that man's voice, almost like theatrical, something will happen in the next two to three years that will change this world forever. And the entire context of everything we were talking about was extraterrestrial civilizations in conflict on this planet. That's what those seven hours were about. What else could I conclude? Whatever 9-11, we know what happened physically. What we don't know is the truth behind the who, the what, and the why, and what would be the relationship to conflict of extraterrestrial civilizations, the implication being that world events as dramatic as that could be related to a war among extraterrestrials. Nothing has changed for me on that. I think that the, the complete clarity that we are supposed to be a humanoid species that did a crossfade with Neanderthal 45,000 years ago, that's, that's when the crossfade was supposed to have happened, meaning both were on the earth for a period of time, 45,000 years ago. What caused the crossfade? Neanderthal were bigger. They had a larger cubic brain capacity. Anthropologists, archeologists who have studied where, where they, um, Neanderthal were. They have found rectangles where pollen was in the ground. They, they conclude that that meant that the Neanderthals put flowers on the graves of their dead. That means that they had some spiritual component about them, death, life, birth, and yet they are replaced by us. Who'd made the decision and that briefing paper 
These extraterrestrial biological entities manipulated DNA in already evolving primates to create Homo sapiens. That is, we are made by extraterrestrials. And others say, Linda, you can't possibly say that. We have religions. It's Adam and Eve made. And so it, why? It doesn't contradict there being a divine field. It does not contradict the Nag Hammadi saying, the thought that dwells in the light is the infinite all in which this whole everything that is in existence is in the thought that dwells in the light. This doesn't contradict any of that. These baby humans in this vast universe there's the missing link to reality, right there. And you, you get up to where we are now, on a planet where people are killing each other every single day over the color of their skin, that what their sexual preference is, and we are, it's why I think it is just so bent, it is so damaged, because we have been living in an ark of policies of lies and denial that have served people who wanted power and money and had nothing to do with serving an experiment, whatever we are, to extraterrestrials as defined in government documents. We have never ever been told by anybody, you are the product of genetic manipulation by vast technologically superior civilizations and that dear God, divine field, thought that dwells in the light. There is nothing wrong with having some babies as long as you tell them the truth. And in 2023, nobody in a political situation Nobody in a government situation, nobody in a military, nobody has told the truth. And the punishment for reporting UFOs, reporting an abduction, reporting having something in your house that gets reduced to your mentally ill, that if you're in the military, you are assigned to go to a psychiatrist because that psychiatrist will control what you say for the rest of your life. Yeah. We've got to get past, we have got to break this open into something that starts healing this planet's perspective on itself. So what do you guys think? You know, this has been a topic of question and curiosity. Do ETs, have they designed us or have they influenced our DNA? How or are they protecting us? You know, in the subsequent uh, video, which we're going to be releasing shortly, Linda talks about the tall um, whites, and she also links them to the Nordics, saying that perhaps they are here to help protect humanity. Well, we want to know what you think. Did ETs or did 9-11 have something to do with ETs? Is this the first time you're hearing this? It is for me. <laughs> for sure. So thank you for joining us. And we'll see you on November 2nd when we release the full video. And we'll see you for the next couple episodes where we're going to reveal a little bit more about this incredible woman that has really left her mark on the disclosure movement here in the United States and beyond. Mm -hmm.